Or was it down to Wales the fact that you weren't able to play so much running rugby as you did in the first? Probably a bit of both. I don't think we had an, um, as much possession in that second half. As I said before, there's a lot of stop starts, um, a lot of injuries and breaks, um, a lot of penalties uh, and a few errors. So the, the rhythm in the second half definitely didn't flow like it did in the first half. Uh, and we, we were looking to be more direct in the second half. We just didn't get through the, the high number of phases um, until really the, uh, the last play the game. Yes, big frustration, big disappointment. And in particular when we went ahead on the scoreboard, that should be a a reason for us to kick on that we've we've got the lead. Let's let's take the game to the opposition, let's be accurate. Uh, and we weren't during that period. We actually weathered the, the period when we were a man down pretty well, but uh, by that stage the, the clock was running out and it was hard to to make use of that final possession when we were an hour half. Next question from Graham Bean, please. Hi Gregor, um, you said on Friday that um, things had, a lot of change for Scotland in the four years since the last game to Cardiff, but the result and you defeat again. What, what needs to change for Scotland to win in Cardiff? Well, the obvious answer is score more points in the opposition. And that's what we should have That's what we're aiming to do today. Uh, it, was a bit, it was definitely a different scoreline than four years ago. And we were in the game right to the end, but uh, we, we didn't play nearly as well as we can. We know that sometimes that's the opposition that stops you playing and then playing well themselves put, put you under pressure different ways but we just weren't accurate enough in that second half and gave too many penalties away and can I ask about Mark Fagerson he's injured yes uh, you can I don't have much information though he uh, I think it's just a bang on his foot that made him really uncomfortable so he couldn't continue at the pace he was playing at, I thought, thought again he played very well and at the time he had on the pitch and so did Magnus who came on for him. So at this stage we're hopeful it's, it's no more than that. Thank you. If we can move now on to the embar embargoed section, so this is just for Scottish travelling journalists um, and just for Monday, um, if, if any of the travelling guys can raise their hand then you can ask a question. Alistair, do you want to kick off the Monday section, please? Yeah, hi there, Gregor. Um, you've got a couple of weeks till, uh, till you play France, and that's going to be a big, do you think you can turn things around in that time? Well, that'll be the aim, and we've done that in the past. We've, we've lost opening games of Six Nations or, or games in the middle. A couple of years ago, we lost our first two, and then one won our next three. But we know the challenges come hard at you. We were playing against a team that's improved a lot since the last time we played them and are up there with one of the best teams in the world. So we will have to be much better, but we have, we have two weeks to improve. Probably just one week, because uh, we were not able to have training camps with our whole team like the other nations. But I'm sure that the, the determination will be there from everyone to, to improve from our first two games. I, I, I know it's very early days, but at this stage, are you thinking at all of a change in personnel? Was anything obvious that's come out of this game that you thought what you can what you can change for uh, for France? No, that's that's not the process we would work. It would we've got two weeks before the game anyway, but we'll we we'll go into more detail on on how the team played and then look at France before we think about selection. Uh, Steve, Steve's going to take over from you on the same phone here. Hi, Gregor. Can you uh, just are you concerned at the way that Wales were able to disrupt Scotland's breakdown, especially in the second half? 
and where he can perhaps concern that the absence of Jimmy that Jim was felt there in being a player could force on both sides of the ball in that area. Yeah, look, I don't. Like Jimmy's a, a very good player and he's been outstanding for us, but um, I felt Magnus uh, and Sam Skinner put huge effort into the game. So they're the players that, that played in that six, six jersey today, I suppose, uh, obviously, uh, Magnus went to eight. So Sam and, and Rory Darge. Uh, we'll, we'll have a good look at the interpretation of the breakdown too, because at times uh, teams were getting rewarded jackals, other times the ball was getting slowed down and teams were getting penalties penalised for not rolling away but I'll have to have a good look at that last 20 minutes to see if if there should have been more penalties uh, that's what we felt at the time I, f I feel that um, it was more ball control than, than actual breakdown issues so we did uh, have a couple of drops and lost the ball in collisions which stopped the flow of our attack can we have the next question for Callum Crow, please? Yeah, Gregor, can you just give an idea of um, what Finn's mood was like after the game and how, how he viewed the yellow card himself? Yeah, so he seemed fine. I had a good chat with him about the game. Uh, he's obviously down, like like we all are. Uh, we didn't chat about the yellow card, but we talked about other things. And we were all aware that within any sports team, but uh, Certainly, uh, one playing a competition like the Six Nations, there's there's going to be performances that aren't up there with what we aspire to to achieve. There's going to be defeats, so it's important that we do stay together and we, and we work out how we can get better for the following game. It's never a nice moment to get in the change room. It's not a nice moment when you hear the final whistle and your your chances of winning the game are, are over. But it is part of sport, and now we have to to be better for our next game uh, and obviously we know we'll have to be playing a team like France. Do you have any more questions for the Monday section? No? All good. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, uh, I'll bring in Stuart shortly. Mobile disco here. It's annoying. <coughs> Hi everyone, um, we're good to go for Stuart Hogg's post-match press conference. Once again, it will just be split up into this time two sections, broadcast and then written. Um, if everyone can just ask one question, then a follow-up please. Um, and we'll, we'll kick off with the broadcasters. Uh, Hamish, if you want to start. And also, just if anyone wants to follow-up questions, just raise your hand and I'll, I'll let you in. Hamish, if you want to kick us off, thank you. Uh, hi Stuart, so, can you put your finger on what can happened you that game? You're all good. You're all, you, you can take it here, yeah. Sure. Can you hear me? Hi, sir. Can you put your finger on, on what happened in that game where it slipped away? Um, yeah, we, we, we cost ourselves again. At times, I am on, I am on me. Can you hear Stuart, everyone? Yep. Yeah. He's connected. Um, yeah, I think for us, we, we pretty much chucked that away at times. Um, you know, for me, when we give away a penalty or we, we give away a knock on, that's that's one thing. Um, we, when we compound error on error, that's when we get frustrated, um, and that's that's not a true reflection of what we're about. Um, and yeah, that last twenty minutes, uh, yeah, we killed ourselves, unfortunately. When you went ahead, were you feeling that you could get a, a goal or something like that? Uh, we were ahead because we showed a, a true reflection of what we were about. Um, we, we were running the ball hard. We were getting in behind the defence. We were changing the point of a, uh, point of contact. Um, pretty much doing the simple things well. Uh, that was really really effective for us, and it got us our, our field position and our points. Um, and unfortunately, we just didn't back it up. You know, a, a game of Test match rugby is all about you know competing for the small moments. Um, every single moment you get in the game, make sure we we're winning these. Uh, little margins, playing in the right areas, uh, and unfortunately we didn't back it up today. Okay, thanks. Next question to... Is there any other broadcasters who want to raise their hand and ask a question? Otherwise we'll just move on to the written section. No, on to written then. Uh, Calm, if you still get your hand up, if you want to ask the first one. 
you know, is, there, is there a frustration in the, in the way that you've allowed the second half to get away from yourselves? And when you look at the performances over the past year or so, that, that display in the second half didn't live up to what you have shown previously. Yeah, exactly that. I think that's why I'm sitting here really, really bitterly disappointed and frustrated in what we've done. Um, as I say, that at times we'll, we'll be beaten by better sides when um, when things don't quite go our way. But I, I think we gave them too easy, too easy avenues into the game. Cheap, cheap field position, cheap penalties, cheap knock-ons, um, stuff that we didn't quite uh, work hard enough to get in good positions for. Um, and that's the thing that that bugs me most. You know, at times. In the past, we've been in games and let, let games slip, and unfortunately, that's a, another one today. Um, we're better disappointed in the changing room. Um, and yeah, it's it's frustrating because it's we have to wait two weeks now to get another shot at it. If we can move on to Alistair Reid, please. Hi, sir. You've, um, as you say, you've got a couple of weeks, but you won't all be together. Um, how much of a difference is that is that going to make? And uh, uh, you, you know, how, how personally do you think you can feel you, you feel you can turn it around? Hundred percent, hundred percent. I think we, we showed for the first half, especially the first kind of twenty minutes. We knew they were going to come out full of emotion, um, looking to to make a a reaction, have a reaction on the back of their performance last week, and they've done exactly that. But we managed to to ride the storm. Um, I think there was only kind of six points they got in the first six minutes, but that was again two little things by us. Uh, we previewed going into the game that the, the referee would favour the, the attacking side, um, and he seemed to do that. Uh, you know, at times we didn't quite get uh, set in defence quick enough, and it allowed them, you know, a good momentum, and, and they get about six points on the back of it. Flip it on its head, we managed to ride that storm, get get ourselves in, in front. Play, play our brand of rugby, play what we're about, show a true reflection of ourselves. Um, and that's why we were uh, in front after that kind of little period. So <clears throat> the frustrating thing for me is we didn't quite back it up in the second half. We um, we, we chose a game plan that was, was spot on to play against them. And unfortunately, we just didn't execute it. Uh, and that's the, the thing that's you know pretty frustrating at the minute. Um, yeah, also, um it seemed to fall away uh, in the, you know, quite badly in the second half after, as you say, quite a promising first half to you. Was that you you falling off or was it Wales raising the game? You could say a bit of both, I guess. Um, but the Wales didn't really have to work hard for their field position. They We, we coughed it up too cheaply, gave away a, a penalty, compounded error on error. They're, they're fine as individuals, you know, when we knock on and we give away a penalty, that's, that's rugby, that's life. Um, but when we compound it, that's that's when we start getting frustrated, and that's something that we've looked at over the last few years. That you know Wales beat us last year um, through having four consecutive penalties on the bounce and then playing on penalty advantage. They've done that twice, and they scored twice last year at Murfield, and that's something that you know we've managed to nip in the bud. Um, just a little bit, a little bit frustrating that we've managed to give them easy avenues into the game, um, and unfortunately they're the ones that are singing in behind me, which is pretty bugging to hear. Right, thank you. That's all. That's all we've got time for. Thanks, everyone. Cheers.